Uh, we are particularly pleased to have with us today several city council members. I think Jim Thornton will refer to them a little later. Uh, visit LaGrange representatives. Uh, staff from the Troop County Archives who helped us with this exhibit, as well as current and past members of our advisory group here at Hills and Dales. We're also happy to have descendants of Fuller E. Calloway Sr. And uh, lastly, we're honored to have descendants of several Calloway Mill employees who have generously loaned objects or photographs for this exhibit. We are here today to remember two important events in the history of our community, events that would have a profound impact on the future of LaGrange and Troop County. There are those who think that remembrances of the past serve no purpose, but I believe what the famous astronomer Carl Sagan said, you have to know the past to understand the present. The first event we're commemorating occurred in 1870, 150 years ago, when Fuller E. Calloway Sr. was born here in LaGrange. No one could have possibly imagined how Fuller's life would become so inextricably linked and tied to the early success of LaGrange. No doubt he made a mark and was a true American success story. Secondly, 120 years ago in 1900, Fuller and a large group of investors started Unity Mill, not far from here off of Truett Avenue. That would become the first of many cotton mills that Fuller established and grow into a large textile empire, a business venture that would establish LaGrange as a major textile production center. In honor of these two important dates, our entire staff, our visitor center staff, and our garden staff, led by Haley Merciers, who has served as our curator, have created a new exhibit, and that exhibit is called Spinning a Yarn, Unraveling the Callaway Mill Story. As far as I know, this is the first exhibit dedicated exclusively to the story of the Callaway Mill Enterprises. So why are we here on this specific day, September the 18th? Well, it does have historical significance. On this day in 1908, 112 years ago, the directors of Unity Mill publicly announced that they would use over a half a million dollars of profits from Unity to fund a completely new mill called Unity Spinning Mill. The new mill opened its doors in 1909 and became part of the rapidly growing enterprise. A business venture which would eventually have nearly a dozen mills and continue operation until it was sold to Millican in 1968. We are happy to have with us here today Trip Penn, who's the president of Fuller E. Calloway Foundation and Calloway Foundation, as well as LaGrange Mayor Jim Thornton. Jim is serving his second term and has done a wonderful job for our city. Both of them will share comments. Afterwards, we'll ring the Millstead bell, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And then all of you will be invited inside to see our exhibit. But first, it is my great pleasure to introduce pastor and city council member Willie Edmondson. Nobody loves LaGrange like uh, Willie Edmondson, who is now serving his sixth term on our city council. I don't think you want me to say that. <laughs> Pastor Edmondson, would you please come forward and offer us a prayer on this special day? I didn't want you to say that. <laughs> Since I'm only 29 years old. Let us pray. O gracious and eternal God, our Father, we come with our hearts uplifted to you. We come in thanksgiving today, thanking you for 150 years ago, you allowed a servant to be born in Troop County, a servant with a charitable heart. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have allowed his family to continue his great legacy. We thank you for this United States. We thank you for the state of Georgia. We thank you especially for Troop County and LaGrange, Georgia. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that as we bless this service today. We ask that your blessings will continue to fall upon this family. You will give them strength, you will give them courage, you will give them good health, and continue to help them, Heavenly Father, to do what they have done, to help the citizens of LaGrange, not just LaGrange, but all over this country. We thank you for this foundation. We ask your blessings to continue to bless them. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Dr. Edmondson. We appreciate you being part of this uh, ceremony. It's a wonderful prayer. And thank you, Carlton. Um, you know, Carlton loves this home and the gardens and this visitor center deeply, and he takes excellent care of the place that Mr. Callaway developed and cherished. We're really fortunate to have Carlton as the leader of Hills and Dales. My name is Tripp Penn, and I'm president of Callaway Foundation, and we appreciate all of you being here to help celebrate these special milestones. 150th anniversary of Fuller Callaway Sr.'s birth and the 120th anniversary of the founding of the textile mill, of his first textile mill. We're excited to be able to share the mill exhibit with you. Uh, we'll do that right after the ceremony. I uh, just want to thank Haley again for spearheading this project. Uh, a lot of people helped. It certainly wasn't her by herself, but I just I saw it at different stages along the way, and I know hours and hours and hours have gone into that. So for everybody who participated in the exhibit, I appreciate the work that, that you all did. I also appreciate Troop County Archives. They were a great partner in this process. We appreciate you all being so cooperative and supportive along the way. I want to take just a minute to introduce some of the uh, family members who are, who are with us today. Um, members of Callaway Foundation trustees and, and other family members. First of all, we have Jane Alice Craig. Uh, we also have Ida Russell. We have Ellen Harris and her husband Bob. We have Esther Rainey, who's an officer with the foundation. And then we have Ken Callaway uh, from Pine Mountain. Glad to have you with us. Um, so let's go back to 1870. A lot going on in the country. So we were five years removed from the Civil War, and Reconstruction was well underway. That year, Georgia became the last Confederate state to join the Union. The country was trying to rebuild. If you look at the South and the southeastern United States, it was mainly agricultural-based, agrarian. Um, Christmas was actually designated as a federal holiday that year, so uh, a lot, lot going on that year. And on July uh, 15th, Fuller Earl Calloway Sr. was born. Now you all, uh, you're kind of part of the extended family, so you all already know a lot about Fuller Calloway Sr., but I'll give you just a few of the details. First of all, he's born into a large, loving family. He was the ninth child. His father, Abner Reeves Calloway, was a, was a Baptist preacher and a landowner. His mother was Sarah Jane Howard, and unfortunately she passed away when he was eight years old. So you think about the profound impact of being in such a large family and losing your mom at such an early age. There are a lot of stories about Fuller Calloway Sr. as a child, and, and most of them talk about his work ethic and his ingenuity. You know, early on, as a young teenager, he was already a born salesman. At his core, both as a child and, and as an adult, he was an entrepreneur. And by his 18th birthday, he started his first, first business, which was a department store. Um, as I read about Mr. Calloway, there's some themes that you often hear. First is faith, love of family, caring for people, and love of community. Um, that love of community was evident in a lot of ways, but there was an early decision that really stood out that showed how much he loved LaGrange. Um, by the time he was 25, 1895, his local department store was booming. And he had a reputation as a great businessman around, the, around Georgia and around the Southeast. So a group of investors uh, came together and they offered to build him a large department store in Atlanta, give him a big salary and stock options. And uh, he turned them down. He said, I'd rather be a big frog in a little pond than a little frog in a big pond. Had every opportunity to leave LaGrange, but he chose to make his mark here and do his own thing in his hometown. Now, Mr. Calloway was not a perfect man, and the times in which he lived were certainly not perfect either. But he did care deeply about his fellow man. Unlike many of the mills in the Northeast, he did everything he could to make this, the mill the center of the community and to make the Mill Village a vibrant place for his employees to live and work. Uh, his mills had nice houses, they had schools and parks and greenhouses and churches and many opportunities for adults and children to have recreation and arts and culture. Again, wanted to make it a great place to live. When asked about his mills, he replied, and this is one of his most famous quotes, you all have probably heard it, we make American citizens and we run cotton mills to pay the expenses. He clearly also cared deeply about developing the individual. He was passionate about education and um, particularly uh, the time he invested in his schools. 
And he was against the standardization of people. He once remarked, the only man I'm afraid of is the ignorant man. Educate a man and you can reason with him. I don't want people who cannot think in any undertaking of mine. I'm afraid of them. I'm never afraid of a man who can think. Mr. Calloway was led by faith and driven by values. Uh, some of his values that he's mentioned over, mentioned over the years and in different interviews included cooperation, family and friendship, generosity, work ethic, loyalty, thrift, perseverance, and being practical. Now, though he passed away more than 90 years ago, these values are transcendent. And these are exactly the type of values upon which you can build a solid company or lead a fruitful life in, in the year 2020. It would be easy to measure Mr. Callaway's accomplishments and impact just based on the businesses he built or his accolades and accomplishments in the world of textiles. After all, he built department stores, he built mail order businesses, banks, insurance companies, real estate agencies, and many successful textile mills. And again, we look forward to sharing the history of those mills in just a few minutes. But he was also very active in developing and supporting the social fabric of our community, creating nonprofit entities and supporting churches and hospitals and college and many other organization, organizations whose missions were to serve people. Perhaps his most lasting legacy was in the world of philanthropy. He chartered Relief Association in 1917, and the primary purpose of that organization was to help better the lives of the people who worked in the mills and who lived in the mill villages. This foundation later, through some iterations, evolved into Fuller E. Calloway Foundation, and that foundation is still alive and very active today, supporting scholarships for local students, local high school students and graduate students, and providing nurses for, for Wellstar West Georgia Medical Center. To date, this foundation has given away more than $65 million, most of it right here in Troop County. So because of his generosity, he was often called a philanthropist. And he would reply, philanthropist nothing, I'm a businessman. Now while he may have scoffed at this title of philanthropist, there are many examples of how generosity was a fund fundamental part of his character. One example that really stands out to me is, um, according to his son, Fuller Jr., there was a conversation um, with their accountant. And this was after Fuller Sr. had already become financially successful. And uh, he was talking to his accountant and he said, that's enough. No man needs any more. Every year that we exceed that figure, we'll give away the difference. Now, again, this was 100 years ago, but it sounds strikingly similar to the giving pledge that modern day philanthropists like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett have adopted again more than a century later. Looking back on his life, one way to measure his impact would be to consider what life would be like today had he not been born on July 15th, 1870. Well, first of all, LaGrange and Troop County would be fundamentally different places. Perhaps the textile mills would have found another, uh, another place to land, uh, and tens of thousands of jobs would have gone elsewhere. Many, many businesses would never have been created, and our local churches, our local hospital, our, and LaGrange College would not be nearly as robust. So if he had not been born, then his two sons would not have been born. And you would not have Callaway Gardens, which was founded by Kaysen and his wife in 1952. And you wouldn't have Callaway Foundation, Inc., which was founded and created by Fuller Jr. in 1943 and continues to be a very active part of supporting quality of life for Troop County citizens today. Most of all, again, you wouldn't have his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, and his great-great-grandchildren, all who have made their own significant personal impact on LaGrange and Troop County, and all who have continued those themes of faith, love of family, caring for people, and love of community. Again, these milestones are definitely worth celebrating. We're glad to have you with us today, and uh, thank you all for being part of this. I do agree with Carlton that we're very fortunate to have Mayor Thornton as the leader of our city. He's done a wonderful job, and now I'd like to ask him to come up and make a few remarks.
Thank you. Well, good morning. Today is a very important occasion in the life of our town as we remember and celebrate the legacy of Fuller E. Calloway Sr. I am especially grateful to the family members who are here today and also to our city council members, including Dr. Willie Edmondson, who uh, you've already met, but we also have Jim Arrington and Mark Mitchell with us today. I'm glad that they were able to, to join us. In 2020, we all recognize how much our city benefits from the generosity of the Callaway Foundation. A common refrain, if you listen to uh, speeches around town, is that every good thing that happens in LaGrange is due in whole or in part to that generosity. But today, we reflect upon the foundation on which the modern city of LaGrange is based. LaGrange, before Fuller E. Calloway Sr., was a very different place. It was a county seat, so we had a courthouse, and it was a market town with surrounding agricultural communities. While those are very nice attributes, they bear no resemblance to our modern industrial city. After Fuller Calloway, LaGrange became and remains today a center of industry and manufacturing. It was the progressive vision and entrepreneurial spirit of Fuller Calloway that created what we all know today as the city of LaGrange. And it is that same vision and spirit that sustains us even in 2020. Today, LaGrange is a great place to do business. We have great transportation assets, a robust infrastructure, full service utilities, and a progressive culture. I want you to all know that we can thank Fuller E. Calloway Sr. for those things. Fuller Calloway was an entrepreneur at a young age who became an important merchant in LaGrange, but he wasn't content just as a merchant, and he became both a leading public official and a leading industrialist. Some of you may not know, he was elected to the LaGrange City Council in 1894 and served most of the next 10 years in that role. On the City Council, Mr. Calloway pushed to get the city to build water and sewer infrastructure, recognizing that those are key components of business and residential growth. He also encouraged and lobbied his fellow city council members, which does happen from time to time, to get LaGrange into the electricity business, realizing that electricity was critical to the future of our town. Today, LaGrange is the lowest cost electricity provider in our region and uses utility revenue to offset the need for ad valorem tax. LaGrange residents, you can thank Fuller Calloway for that decision that was made 120 years ago. Mr. Calloway also fought to get a second railroad to come through LaGrange. And fought he did with years of litigation against the Atlanta and West Point Railroad through all the way to the Supreme Court because at the time that was the only railroad in LaGrange. Finally, in 1905, Mr. Calloway succeeded in bringing the Atlanta, Birmingham, and Atlantic Railroad through LaGrange. This competition improved transportation options and opened up more markets for local businesses and industry. The significance of that second railroad was such that an observer at the time commented that 1905, with the unveiling of the second railroad, was the year of new birth for the city of LaGrange. Today, as our city council members and city manager know, when we are recruiting economic prospects to LaGrange, these are the things we talk about. Robust infrastructure low-cost utilities, rail and road transportation networks. 
we're using the exact same language that Fuller Calloway was speaking 120 years ago. I've spoken mostly about his public service role because uh, many of the ways that uh, that still informs our life in our city and our city government today, but he was simultaneously building a business enterprise. Having first started in retail and having invested in the textile mill industry originally with Dixie Mill, Mr. Callaway's first full leap into the textile industry occurred 120 years ago in 1900 with the opening of Unity Mill. It was truly a labor of love, as Mr. Callaway not only invested his personal funds, but also raised money from associates in New York, from other local businessmen, and from many community investors. That mill was only the beginning of what would be three decades of work that would see mills operating throughout LaGrange and even expanding beyond the city to other Georgia communities. His early success led to his recruitment by Millstead Mills in Conyers, at which this bell was located, but it also saw numerous other mills built throughout LaGrange and Manchester and surrounding communities. Much of that is documented in the exhibit. These mills would establish the company that has, was to come to be known internationally as Callaway Mills. The end result of Fuller E. Callaway's vision as both a public official and a local businessman was the greatest period of growth in LaGrange's history. From 1900 until Mr. Callaway's death in 1928, the population of LaGrange grew almost five times over. From a population of just over 4,000 in the 1900 census to more than 20,000 by 1930. That growth was made possible by the infrastructure improvements led by city council member Fuller Calloway and the business starts and expansions led by businessman Fuller Calloway. And the legacy of Mr. Calloway's vision is not that we just simply recount this history but we continue to build upon it. Our city, 120 years later, continues to grow and develop in ways that can support all of our residents. His progressive vision and entrepreneurial spirit inform all that we do as a community. From the civic leaders in the 1970s, expanding industrial parks in LaGrange to attract new businesses and industries, to our community's embrace of new highways and the interstate system and modern railroad expansions, to the city council's decision in the 1990s to create an internet and telecom infrastructure that few cities of our size have. His vision and spirit leads us even today. Our community is indebted to him in so many ways, many of which Tripp has addressed, but as we remember his life and legacy, I think it's fair to say that Mr. Callaway didn't just build a textile business. He built a modern city. LaGrange grew from a small market town whose main draw was a courthouse to a center of modern industry and transportation because of his progressive vision and entrepreneurial spirit. Of course, he had help during his lifetime, and of course, many others have followed his lead through the decades since. But you can't deny the critical role that Mr. Calloway played at that critical time. During the progressive era, the beginning of the industrial south, and the commencement of what is often termed the American century. His was the critical role that ignited that modern era for the city of LaGrange. Our job today, as trustees of his philanthropic legacy, as successors to his civic leadership, and as heirs to his love of LaGrange, is to continue that work which he began. There's something about his vision and spirit that I think we all possess, and about his legacy, and about the people of LaGrange who have benefited from it, that makes me confident we will do just that. Today, we are here to give thanks for Mr. Fillory Calloway Sr.'s life, for the founding of the Unity Mill, 
for the growth and expansion of the Callaway Mills and for the magnificent generosity of the Callaway philanthropies. I like this observation by Mr. Callaway when he said, quote, I was born in LaGrange and I am living there yet and I expect to die there and I do not think that is anything against me. And if you can stabilize people to stay in one place and build up character and friends and reputation, it looks to me like a very good thing. Mr. Callaway truly bloomed where he was planted, and we are all beneficiaries of those successes over a hundred years later. We also embraced that city that Mr. Callaway loved, called home, and tended his entire life. Thank you for joining us today as we honor that life and legacy. I want to, uh, I want to thank Tripp and Mayor Thornton for sharing those uh, wonderful thoughts with us this morning, and I want to thank Pastor Edmonston for his most fitting prayer. It was very appropriate for today. I do hope this remembrance of Fuller Calloway Sr. And, a reflection back, and the reflection back to the founding of Unity Mill will inspire us to move forward with the spirit, the energy, the zeal that Mr. Calloway himself displayed in building what became Calloway Mills. He helped create a platform, but it was only that. There is more work to be done to make LaGrange into a truly unified city and we all need to dedicate ourselves to that cause. Before we, ring the ring, before we ring the Milstead bell to honor these historical events and to open the exhibit, I want to briefly tell you a little bit about the bell, which is the largest artifact in our exhibit. It's also the only outdoor artifact. This 1,000 pound bell, actually uh, when we lifted it with the tractor, we think it's a touch more, uh, dates back to 1904 and was used at Milstead Mill in Conyers, Georgia. Mr. Calloway invested in and became president of Milstead in 1903, and the bell was used to signal the beginning and ending of the workday. While the mills in LaGrange were steam-powered, there is no river coming through LaGrange, we had, uh, we had steam whistles, but Milstead was along the Yellow River, and it was water-powered. Since it was water-powered, they used this traditional, what's called a mill or a factory bell, up until the end of World War II. After we ring the bell, we will have light refreshments of old-fashioned bottled Cokes and Lance toast cheese crackers. This was a favorite combination. Alice Hand Calloway regularly served guests who visited her garden. We also invite you to explore the exhibit and hopefully discover something new and interesting about the history of your community. We do ask that if you go inside that you wear a mask and we have extra masks at the refreshment table for you. So I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for coming out this morning and for those of you that are watching virtually on Facebook Live and I now invite Mayor Thornton to come forward and ring the Milstead bell. Oh, and I got one last thing. Before you ring it, they have asked that if after he rings the bell, you can keep your mask on. If you'll gather around, we want to take a picture of this whole group on either side of the bell, but you can wear your mask at that time. It's loud. <laughs> Okay, if, if you're willing to come up for a photograph, we'd love to have you come up for a photograph by the bell. <laughs> 